Hey everybody, it's Ricardo, and I am here with Glenn Egan from Sansour Games, and we are about to see an updated version of the new Sly Cooper game, Thieves in Time. And you guys are showing us something kind of cool. It's a bit of a throwback uh, for fans of the series. You guys have hideouts. Yes, hideouts are back. Um, something that, uh, you know, working on the Sly collection, we really liked uh, the kind of game structure of Sly 2 and Sly 3. That sort of, you'd have an open kind of hub environment, and then you'd have uh, these spokes that ran off it. The hub environment gave you this sort of like uh, non linear, lots of uh, different gameplay choices. Uh, and then the, hub, uh, the spokes tended to be a lot uh, tighter, kind of platformer oriented gameplay. And then the hideout was essentially the base camp, you know, the gangs all getting together before they set off on their different jobs. Uh, we got uh, Sly, he's sitting here chilling, and uh, Bentley, of course, working the computers, and Murray is uh, he's sleeping. There we go. I wake up. <laughs> but you guys aren't just kind of recycling the hideouts, because I do see that there are some options to move around and look around the environment. So tell us about some, some perks that you've tossed in for folks. Well, yeah, we really wanted to expand upon hideouts. So here we've got the uh, treasure wall. Um, in, the, in slide two and three, you'd have these sort of treasure challenges where you'd go out into the environment, you'd uh, collect these pieces of treasure, you'd bring them back, sell them on ThiefNet. And they're a little bit sort of throwaway, but here we run to really make them kind of special. So we've got a couple of cool pieces here that you collect. This, uh, this uh, beautiful uh, carved uh, Edo period uh, controller, for instance, uh, from Feudal Japan. Um, and a nice teapot, and uh, yeah, all kinds of stuff. They have a little backstory, uh, this kind of familiar looking claw. Um, and yeah, you'd want to uh, collect uh, various uh, pieces, and that would, um, that would lead to unlocking some aspects of gameplay that we're going to be talking about in the next few months. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it at that for now. Also, we're going to take a look at the uh, we've got the costume gallery. Uh, we'd shown off costumes in uh, at, at E3, and uh, these are you know sort of uh, pivotal to Sly Cooper: Thieves in Time. And here you'll be able to see the ones that you've gathered as you've been playing. Uh, it sort of gives you a sense of your progression through the uh, through the game, and find out their special abilities and also a little history on them, stuff like that. And so now we can take a look at a at a mission where we're actually going to collect the pieces of that armor. But to be clear, you guys are cheating just a little bit. We're only going to get one piece of armor in this level before we get it. But the reality is, you get it. You get to put the whole thing together, right? Yeah, yeah. This is uh, this is a demo, so we're just gonna just gonna have you pick up one piece. And uh, I don't want to I don't want to overassess uh, Kaylee over there and uh, on this mission. And the binocchi comes back. So, uh. <laughs> and in, as we're in this close up, it does look like Sly's had some work done since the last time we saw him. Uh, maybe not Botox, but there is something a little bit different. So you want to talk to us about how you guys are tweaking them? Well, yeah, um, we're always always trying to improve, uh, always uh, always working on everything and iterating. And so Sly as a character continues to evolve, uh, works on his shaders, just a little uh, little bit on his face, um, just really kind of giving you a sense of of. Uh, a slightly older, a slightly uh, a slightly tougher Sly, but you know, still trying to staying true to his uh, lovable scoundrel kind of image. Now, when we were on that roof, we did see an arrow kind of uh, pointing him in a direction. So that's that's new. So you want to talk to us about that? Sure. Well, you know, the hub worlds on the PlayStation Three, they're obviously you know much bigger, much more dense, much more lush. Uh, and we're also adding a lot more verticality. Uh, you know, before the uh, slide two and three tended to kind of work on two strata, but now there's a lot more strata to the gameplay. And we, it's it's not fun. It's not fun or Sly Cooperish to be lost. You know, like we really wanted to uh, build these environments, to concentrating on the density of gameplay. Uh, so. We brought back, you know, the god rods, you know, that uh, in the previous games. But we also included this uh, compass, and the compass is really handy, especially when you're down amongst the buildings. You know, you need to see which direction you're going to go. But also, the compass will point up and down to tell you if something's uh, above or beneath you. So here, for instance, you can see it's a little trickier to see the god rod, but now the compass clearly tells uh, Sly which way he needs to be heading. And as usual, there are members of the well-armed members of the animal kingdom to be avoided. Uh, there's still there's stealthy sneaking, and there is some pickpocketing, I believe. Yes. So this mission is going to require uh, Sly getting his way across the level here, 
Uh, now, of course, there's you know dozens of different paths that uh, that Kaylee could be taking here, uh, but we're really going to uh, reward exploration. Again, we've got uh, clue bottles uh, that you're going to be able to collect. So I just found one here. Nice transfer. Wow, outstanding. <laughs> Um, that you're going to be able to gather as you go through the environment. And then he's going to be finding this hapless boar guard over here, who I believe is taking a nap. Oh. Wow. <laughs> so here we can see the, uh, the compass in action again. Now it's pointing down to show him where the objective is. And he's going to have to wait until this guy walks past here, because he doesn't want to alert anybody. And then he can move in and pickpocket the armor. Or he can avoid fr he can avoid being shot and then come back. <laughs> oh, he's doing good. One more piece. Nicely done. <laughs> now, besides looking cool, there is a perk to wearing the armor, correct? Well, yes. Uh, as in the previous games, the armor will act as a disguise. So now, instead of getting uh, you know attacked by the various guards, he, uh, he can actually garner some respect. And I'm going to give him a salute. Uh, and again, we saw in the boss battle at E3, the armor is also impervious to fire and has a couple other abilities. But, you know, the drawback is it's a, it's a little slow, it's a, it's a little unwieldy, so, uh, but he can quickly switch in and out of it to make his way back across the level. Now, how many costumes are we going to have in the game, roughly, because you're getting that look like you don't want to tell us. <laughs> so, what would make you feel comfortable telling us? <laughs> Well, uh, there will be one unique costume uh, for each of the episodes. And uh, so far, we've shown off two. So, at least two. <laughs> but yeah, and we'll be talking more about the other episodes uh, in the next few months. All right, so in this particular level, you actually need the costume for a very specific reason, right? Besides the fact that everybody's cool with you, this door is a problem if you don't have the costume, right? Yeah, and so right here we're going to see, you know, the basic uh, functionality of the costume as a disguise, and this disguise is going to provide uh, Sly with the ability to get into the, uh, get through the gate. And that's pretty much going to be the main role of the costumes initially, although, for folks that remember our E3 demo, costume also comes in very handy during boss fights in some cases, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I think that uh, boss fights will incorporate uh, aspects of gameplay that you've learned throughout the entire episode and so the costume would obviously feel feature as it's uh, as a key to what you've been learning as you've been playing. All right well that all sounds very cool you know the last question we're gonna ask you when's it coming out? 2012. <laughs> all right we tried for a date they're still saying 2012 so anytime between January and December of next year Sly Cooper's gonna be hitting the PS3 uh, we're going to bring you a lot more as soon as we get the rock to bleed. But until then, you know, this is your latest update on Sly Cooper Thieves in Time. We're going to have a lot more for you in the months to come.